Welcome to the Develop Yourself podcast, where we teach you everything you need to land your first job as a software developer by learning to develop yourself, your skills, your network, and more. I'm Brian, your host. Today, I have Jeff Huck, software engineer turned coach for introverted tech leaders to help them speak effectively and confidently. Today, we're going to break down how you, yes, you as a shy developer out there, can become an effective communicator and also why you need to. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hello, Brian. I'm very happy to be here. I'm super happy to talk with you today, too, because the way we met, which is really interesting, was you reached out through LinkedIn, I believe, and said, hey, I have an idea for your show. And I get a lot of these. And most people, I'm like, yeah, maybe. And I don't do sponsorships or, or take money, as, as you know. But your idea was really good. And you're like, hey, I help people in tech like learn how to communicate effectively and do public speaking. And I thought, oh man, that's something I've struggled with throughout my career. At one company, I actually got called out for this. I was at a really small tech startup and there were like five of us. I've talked about it on the podcast before. And, um, you know, the CTO and CEO were talking about strategy and what we're going to do with the tech stack and technical stuff. And I would just sit there and say nothing ever. And the CTO takes me out for lunch mm. one day <laughs> and he's like, hey, man, um, is there any reason why you don't say anything in the meetings ever? And I'm like, well, <laughs> he's like, there's only like three of us. And so it's, it's you know, it's kind of hard. Like we kind of need you to, to, to say stuff. I said, well, you guys are all like really senior and I don't really know much. And, you know, so I just, he said, well, and he basically told me like, you need to say something like that's kind of why we hired you. It wasn't just to like write a little bit of code here and there. It's like. Oh, I can relate right? so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I, I was going to ask you, like, what what was your journey like? Because you were a software developer and then you transitioned into this. Like, what were some moments that made you realize, like, hey, this is something I should pursue and help other developers learn this skill? Yeah. So first, it was exactly like you. I also remember being in a meeting, not saying anything. And... I really didn't know from the start that I would become a public speaking coach one day. And in fact, if you would have asked me, I would never have believed it. Really? In my case, okay. the, the shyness, oh yeah, the, the shyness was so strong. You know, for, for me, it was really something that made me suffer a lot professionally, but also personally. Wow. For, for example, going out of my apartment uh -huh. when the neighbor was in the corridor was something that I was afraid to do. Wow. Going to the bakery, uh -huh. impossible. So the suffering was extremely strong and that's how it started. Well, first I thought maybe it will get better mm -hmm. if I just wait. But years later... Seven, eight years later, it was getting actually worse and it didn't go anywhere. And I think my first realization moment was when I tried to picture how I would be at 60 years old if I just continue like this. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't like what I imagined back then. I, bet not. Because I knew it going to be worse. I would be alone. You know, I, I was one of those geeks who were very passionate about tech since they were a teenager okay. and who completely forgot about all the rest. So here I was, I, I think my first, I'm going to say it, uh, my first girlfriend, I think I had at 28 years oh, old. Oh, Okay. <laughs> so it was really just uh, so late, late but bloomer. I, I think it's nice to. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think it's nice to start with it, so that if you're listening to it and you have extreme social anxiety, know that you can make it. And if you're not as bad as I was, then you have uh, all the hope uh, in the world. <laughs> wow. I I mean, it's so, it's so funny when you meet people and like you learn this about them. I I never would have ever guessed. I thought you were like the dude that was in the meetings that was always speaking. And you're like, oh, I bet I could do this for other people. Hey, that's, that's, that's so cool. I mean, that's a, that's an amazing story. No, no, I am. No, no, I am this dude. <laughs> so you, you were the but, dude. And everyone thinks that I was like this all the time, but no, 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 it was really a, a joke. 
Hey, I hope you're enjoying this episode, and if you're interested in becoming a software developer, learning how to build complex software, and actually get hired, join me at Parsity.io. If you're serious about joining, just schedule a call with me by clicking the link in the show notes. How was that journey? What what led you from being the shy, super introverted developer to now teaching people? I mean, we had a session together, actually, before we even did this podcast, because you offered me a free session. And it was, you were super energetic. You helped me with some public speaking issues I've been having and gave me some great feedback. It was an amazing session. And yeah, how did, yeah, how did you learn this? What, what happened? So first it was this, you, know, you need a drive to go to this because it's scary. Mm-hmm. If you're shy, going to other people is extremely scary. But I couldn't stand this picture of myself being the same all mm-hmm. my life. And I, and I saw that that's not the life I want to live. And so I started to just talk to people and soon I realized it's something I realized 10 years ago in a bus I was in the bus and I wasn't in a really good mood you know I was lost in my thoughts Mm -hmm. I was thinking about stuff but then I had a guy sitting next to me and he started to talk to me and we had this small conversation Mm -hmm. it wasn't very long it was maybe less than 10 minutes and I don't remember what we talked about. But I, what I remember is that when I left the bus, I felt great. And the first idea that came in my mind was, whoa, I was sociable. That's so nice. I can make it. Yeah. But then the second thought was that you did it because the guy talked to you. Otherwise, yeah. nothing would have happened. Sure. So in a way, I felt great because this guy decided to initiate a conversation with me. Otherwise, I would still be lost in my thoughts because there is no reason I, I wouldn't. So that's when I realized that if I want to change something, I need to be this guy who's starting a conversation. Mm-hmm. And that's really the key. If you're always waiting for people to come to you, if you're always reacting, you never progress. If you want to learn social skills, you, you need to be the one who's starting it, the one who initiates the discussion yeah. with people. So that's how it started. Great point. <laughs> Super good point. And then a lot of practice. <laughs> how, how did you, I mean, we're going to get into this too, but that, like, what, what did you do to practice? Did you go to like Toastmasters or in front of a mirror or what? Later, I, yeah. L- later on, I did for public speaking, but for just social skills or networking skills of j- just talking to people, I did that by challenging myself. I thought, okay, let's go to one event tonight. And my challenge is initiate a conversation with one person that I don't know. So I would go there. It was extremely scary because the the, the path of developing those social skills is facing fear many, many Mm -hmm. times. But you People who listen to this would be happy to know that the most difficult moments are the first ones. And after you start to get satisfaction and it becomes cool and fun. So one person mm-hmm. initiate a conversation. Then the next time two. Wow. Then the next time three. And then the magic happened. It becomes routine, right? After a while, I assume. It's like, okay, now I am not so scared, anxious. There is a little bit of yeah. that. But there is also something else. And I'm not sure how it works, but it does. And in fact, when I, 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 I coach people for social skills too. And I already had people transformed by these unique, unique things that they, they didn't know that when you go to a place where you don't know mm-hmm. anyone and you initiate, your, you initiate a conversation with a few people Usually three, three is a good number. You open up and then you want to speak to everyone. You don't have to force it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there, is a, there is a switch. And once you light on the switch, then it becomes amazing. So it's, it's not just about facing fears and challenging yourself again and again uh-huh. and being a, a tough guy, you know. No, it, uh, there is really a switch where at some point you, you just want to where do it. It becomes enjoyable. It feels amazing. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's important. It, it becomes so enjoyable. That's important. Or, otherwise, you would probably not do it again and again, you know, because it's a very long process. Oh yeah. I mean, who wants to like do something they don't like doing? And you know, ideally, I mean, we're humans. We're, we're meant to communicate and speak with each other. I think at a fundamental level, like we all want to be heard and listened to and and feel a part of something. And not having that skill to communicate can make you feel really alone. Like like you said. In the beginning of your story, you felt like, can I, can I really do this? Can I go through my life without being able to communicate? But why do software developers in particular seem to struggle with this? Like I've, I've noticed one in my own career, at some point you're going to have to speak in public as a software developer. You're going to be doing a demo. You're going to be leading a presentation as you rise up to senior developer. It's expected that you're going to be speaking in meetings. As you get to manager, you're expected that you're going to be leading meetings, but there's no handbook for this kind of stuff. There's no guide. And if you choose to not play the game, if you say, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay in my little box and not speak and just do my code and keep my head down. It really becomes difficult, perhaps even impossible to get past like mid to senior level. It gets really, really difficult. Why do you think software developers in particular struggle with public speaking and communication. When you learn technical skills, usually it's something that you do alone. You, you're behind your computer, you're coding. Whenever you make a mistake, no one's seeing your mistake. <laughs> and if you want to know the answer of something, usually you can find the answer yourself. That's true. So you don't, you don't really need to speak and ask and in fact in fact if you want to be a great developer you probably need to try to find the answer yourself and not to rely on other people for every question that you you might ask yep. yourself but this thing that makes you a great developer will make you a disaster when it comes to <laughs> communication <laughs> So I, I think the problem is that it's completely orthogonal. If you are a very good communicator, I'm not sure you can become a great developer because you will have this tendency of getting the answer for other people. Ooh, from other people. And, and then you will yeah. not spend all this time yourself struggling <laughs> and struggling. But if you want to be a great developer mm -hmm. and you do everything yourself, then you completely close the, the communication. And so that's probably one of the, one of the reasons. Damn, that's a really uh, good insight. At least, at least I never thought it. about that. <laughs> that's a really good insight, actually. I'm like, you're right. Because like that was what I prided myself on. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. And I'd be, you know, bashing my head against the computer. If I'm honest, that's kind of what I still do nowadays. I don't like really reach out a lot. I've forced myself to, even though it was not natural. Now I do enjoy it. I enjoy the aspect of speaking in public and sharing my knowledge with people. Like that's the reason I do the podcast, right? But um, a few years ago, you never would have caught me doing anything like this at all. That's probably what makes you able today to teach it because you had this time of struggling. If you never struggle, how can you understand when other people are struggling? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point too. And it's funny, somebody reached out to me and said, hey, I found an old video of you at this. Uh, I was in this program for like interview prep or something. I, I was in my third year as a developer and they found this really old video of me that I didn't know anybody could find. And they said, you look so different. And you sounded so different. Like you didn't even, you don't, you don't sound like the same person. I'm like, yeah, that's because that was like seven years ago or something like that. I was completely shy. I had no intention of speaking on camera back then or doing anything like this at all. I wrote a lot online, but I never had any intention of doing something like this, putting my face online at all. Now it's, it's all over the place. Wow. Yeah. Um, for, for developers out there who really struggle with imposter syndrome, which most of us do, me included, I, I spoke to you about that and, and told you one of my issues or one of my fears is that when I speak, I get afraid that people might not see me as intelligent or I need to kind of prove myself. How, how do people like me or any of us that are struggling with that kind of imposter feeling, how do we build the confidence to speak, whether it's in meetings or demos or, or presentations? I think first, you need to realize that even as a beginner, you have something extremely valuable to give. Many projects can go in the wrong direction because 
very fundamental and trivial questions are not asked. And often asking those trivial questions make senior people realize that they forgot something extremely important. Or it's also the beginners who can tell that some process is not efficient or doesn't make any sense because they're not yet too much into how we are doing. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're more critic. So, so it, the first thing is it's important to understand that as a beginner, you have valuable things to, to tell. And we all believe that what we know is obvious because we, because we know it. It's in right. our brain. Yeah. But for other people, it might as well be one of the biggest revelations that they had uh, in the past uh, weeks or months. That's for imposter syndrome. Now, when I, I'm not sure it's completely linked to speaking in public because it's a different skill. You know, you can be the best or the first expert in one specific topic. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have the skill of speaking in public, you will be scared. You will probably talk in a confusing way. It will be hard to understand. Speaking and knowing are two completely different skills. Uh, they're almost not correlated. Yeah. You can, if you are skilled in speaking, you can talk with confidence about anything, even if you don't know about the topic. And Brian, you, you know that because we, we did silly, silly topics of improvisation. That was great. That was super fun. <laughs> yeah. And if you know how to speak, you can always fall back on your legs because you will always find an angle from which you can bring something up. You know, it's not about lying. It's not about, uh, but it's about trying to find a way for you to provide value, even if you don't know anything about the topic. And th- that's what you can do if you have great speaking skills. So of course, you want to be good in the topic and good at speaking. Right? Yeah. But those two, they don't come together. It's if you want to be confident at speaking, you need to practice speaking. Yeah. And for imposter syndrome, it's more like realizing that the value you provide can be something very trivial. Oh, man. It can, it can even just be inspiring and motivating people. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's extremely if you, valuable. If you're a CTO, for example, it's not like you're going to be knowledgeable about like, the, the intricacies of the development and like, the languages being used. It, you're there to kind of drive larger vision, larger scale, inspire people. That's really, really important in any organization. And the thing you said about asking questions, that really, that unlocked a memory. Because I remember being a senior developer uh, at the last company a few years ago, and I was in a meeting and they're saying, this project is, you know, we're going to do this and it's going to be launched on March. And I'm looking at all the Jira tickets, all the different features we have to do for this. And I'm like, is anybody going to say anything? Because this is impossible. Like, this is literally (laughs) impossible. And we're about to end the meeting and... I just said, hey, I just have a question. I said, is everybody aware that like all these things need to get done that are here? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, from our timeline, that's not possible. And it just like everybody's <laughs> face like was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And I said, that's there's zero way that this can get done. The product manager asked the rest of the team, like, is, this, is this accurate? I was still pretty new at the time. And and people are just as well, <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know. And basically, it, it, it illuminated the fact that this is completely not possible. We're three months behind the deadline. And I'm like, was anybody going to say anything about this? I was shocked. Nobody did. It really helped me out because that kind of catapulted me towards engineering Whoa. manager at that point. Because I, oh, yeah, because I said I'll I'll manage the project. Sure, you know. Oh, that, that that's an amazing story. <laughs> it was nuts Be- because ev- ev- I'm sure every everyone knew, right? Ev- everyone knew that it was impossible. Yeah. It- but why didn't you speak up? And it's often like this: if if something you if you feel something has to be said. Usually it has to be said. I had to. <laughs> your, your, your brain knows. Yeah, I was like, this, this can't work. And by speaking up <laughs> mm-hmm. and taking the risk, you, you show that you, you, you have what it takes to be a manager, to be a leader. Yeah, that was a wild one. I thought because you I, thought I, was gonna get, I thought 
either either this is going to end poorly or or I don't I didn't know what was going to happen honestly but I ha- I had to say it like you said and it ended up really helping my career <laughs> overall and I was really new at this point I'd been there for like maybe 2 months or something like that and I was like who who am I you know but yeah it was it was super super helpful um we we've talked about a lot of like the, the benefits of of public speaking and and some steps people can do do you have like any specific exercises or daily habits you recommend for software developers or just introverted people to help improve their communication skills? Yeah. So first, when it comes to social skills, a daily habit that would be great is to initiate a conversation with someone that you don't know every day. You don't have to have a great conversation. (laughs) It's more just to go into the habit, Mm -hmm. you know? Just, uh, hey, uh, w- which department are you from? Or, oh, oh, I already saw you a few days ago. I'm wondering what, what do you do? Just trying to create small links with people. Th- this, this will have two major benefits. So the, the first is that you will lose your shyness if you do it regularly. Mm-hmm. But the best thing, you will create relations with literally everyone in your company. Yeah. And that's, that you, you cannot, you, you, you can't imagine how beneficial and amazing this can be. Totally. If you're the, if you're the person who knows everyone, you can help in any type of communication problem that happened in your company just because you have those relations you can stand out as a leader just because you talk to everyone and it it happened to me many times actually oh yeah <laughs> this this specific uh-huh. thing of going to a place talking to everyone i can tell you that you, we talk about toastmasters yeah, that's right before it's a club in which in which you can learn public mm-hmm. speaking and it's it's what I did. I went there and I talked to everyone. Every time there was someone new, I talked to them and I was friends with everyone. And at some point I was asked to become the president and it wow. wasn't even something that I imagined that I, I would do. It just happened so to cool. me. And even before that, I went to other types of events and I followed the same pattern. I talked to everyone and at some point people asked me, do you want to become a co-organizer? Oh. So you naturally stand mm-hmm. out as a leader when you when you know everyone. That's the yeah. It's very powerful. That's true. That daily habit. If you include this, very good. Man, uh, that's for social uh-huh. skills. Public speaking. What I would recommend, of course, join the Toastmasters Club because you will be able to, to practice. But there's something very easy that you can do every day. It's just record yourself talking for one or two minutes. And that's, that's a great one. I, you uh, record yeah. and you do. Of course, at the beginning, it will Awkward. be not very good. <laughs> but uh, at some point, you will just get into the habit and it will be a lot easier. I used to do that. That's actually everything. It's so funny. Everything you're saying are things I, I kind of naturally figured out to do. I started using Loom which I actually recommend highly to people at, at Parsity, the, the program that I own where we mentor software developers. One of the new things I implemented was recording looms. It said, you're going to record a video like every week or every two weeks talking about a technical concept for just one or two minutes, you know, do your best. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird. And then share it with one person. And if you, or just share it with me if you're uncomfortable, you know, and just get, get used to this idea of speaking you know, in public, in quotes, of speaking on camera, which which actually segues nicely into my next question, is that most of us are remote, or a lot of us are remote now, especially as developers, we're working hybrid. How do we communicate effectively in virtual meetings? And, and how do you help people with like communication online? What what is What are some of the differences and how do people become good at that the first point is technical Ma- make sure that you you are talking in front of your camera you know d- don't have a secondary screen and then you are on the side <laughs> because then it will be impossible for people to to relate and that's a mistake that i see sometimes oh, me too. 
but that's just for the technical mm -hmm. part, part. When it comes to speaking in, whether it's in normal meetings, in physical meetings or in presential, I would give the same advices. First, keep an open posture, like a physically open mm -hmm. posture. Uh, avoid crossing your arms or your legs because this it, it really lowers your energy. It makes it harder to breathe. Have an open posture. It will make you feel better, more confident, and gives more power to your voice. Mm -hmm. And whenever you feel that there is something that you should say, and it's what happened to you, Brian, when uh, this... <laughs> You, you, it was impossible, and you you and you probably felt some pressure yes. in your body before uh -huh. speaking up, right? Yeah, I did. And those moments of pressure, they are those moments that are key in meetings. Not just in meetings in all your life, but be extremely aware of those moments where you start to feel this energy, this pressure, this fear, this anxiety. With these but those butterflies, yeah. whatever name that you call them, because whenever it happens, what does it mean? It means that your brain analyzes the situation and releases energy so that you can speak up. Your it's an automatic. Oh, wow. Another automatic thing that your 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 brain is doing. It's releasing hormones because it it. It analyzed everything that's happening, and uh, it, you know it's it's really automatic. It's not something that you control, but your body knows that there is something going on here. That is so interesting. I used to ignore that feeling or think it was like just anxiety. I never took it as like a sign. Like you, now I'm going to think about that as a sign to speak. That is that what you're implying that that is like your go your your sign to say, hey, I gotta exactly say because the mis the mistake that people make is that. When they start to feel like they 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 start to think, you know, you start to think. Mm, uh, I okay, I will speak up, but first I need to really know what I will yes. say. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And if you start uh -huh. to do that, you lost the oh, game. Oh man, it's finished. You know, you 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 okay. lost because when you think when you think about what to say, we we will both agree, Brian. The, the word doesn't stop. Yeah. The, the word the word outside doesn't mm -hmm. stop for you to think. So what happens is that it's the, the topic switch and then the opportunity is lost. And then you, oh, maybe I should have said something. So now when, when you feel the energy in your body, your brain, some automatic things that happens in your brain decided that what is needed is here. Here's the energy. Now you just need to start to speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. Just open your mouth mm -hmm. and whatever comes out of your mouth will be the thing. I, I've, I've been ignoring that for forever. So I'll be honest. Like this, I, I can think of all the instances of this happening. That is such a cool way to reframe it that I never would have thought about. Oh. I, I really appreciate you saying that. Next time I feel that urge in a meeting, <laughs> I'm going to use it because I've done exactly what you're saying. I've sat there and I've overthought. I'm like, wait, uh, does that make sense? And then by the you're right. By the time you want to get it out, they've already moved on to something else. And, or what's worse sometimes is somebody else will say the thing that you're thinking and everybody's like, oh, what a great idea. Oh, yeah. like, oh dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said it. I oh, should yeah, have yeah, yeah. said that. But this is really the key, huh? Yeah, yeah. The, this sensation, you know, in meeting, and not just in meeting, just sometimes talking to people, and every time, every time you feel this in your body, follow it. And I've done it countless of times, and every time I did it, I grew up, I expanded my comfort mm -hmm. zone, and all the great things happened by following this this trigger that your that my body was giving me. That is cool. So it's really life changing to find. Yeah, that that is such a. I, I like that a lot because I I often talk about following intuition, and sometimes just relying and thinking my brain knows something or my body knows something that I can't maybe articulate right now, but I but I need to follow that that feeling, you know. And I and I, I like how you you summarize that. You know, you work with a lot of like leaders and CTOs and people that are really high up there, and when I think of CTOs, I think of a person that you know commands a room they know how to speak well 
but they come to you because they have a lot of the same problems that maybe I have or people listening to this show have or even junior developers have. I mean, I'm just trying to think or like what why do CTOs come to you and what do you help them out with and how does it help their careers? Everyone has the same emotional things that happen in their body. You know, whether you're a CEO or you're the neighbor, it's the same. We all have the same brain. We all face the same doubts, the same anxiety, the same trouble when we speak in public. If you never if you never trained yourself to speak, you can't have the skill. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible to develop the skill if you never practiced it before. It's it's like development. Mm -hmm. You you never one day you oh I woke up and I knew how to code. That doesn't happen. Yeah. It's practice. You practice many times and you practiced in a way that makes you you know you're not just practicing what you know how to do. Mm -hmm. You're always trying to expand to new challenges. Uh, solve new problems. It's the same in speaking. And um, the sensation is the same. How to structure a presentation, that's one of the things that I'm being asked to. Some people, they ask me how to create compelling stories. Yeah. So they already, they're already comfortable mm -hmm. speaking, but they would like to captivate people. So I, I really have the whole range. I have people who are very scared by just the idea of speaking mm -hmm. in public, including people who want to, to face shyness and fear of talking to people that they don't know, mm -hmm. to the people who already speak a lot or who present every day, but who still fear, feel a lot of anxiety sometimes for days or weeks before presentations. Oh, yeah. I already have that. Yeah. So everyone has the same emotional brain. That that makes that makes a lot of sense. It's just funny because in my head, of course, you have this idea that you just kind of know. But when I became an engineering manager and I was giving presentations, I mean, I remember I got flown to New York and I had to give a presentation in front of some executives and I was freaking out. I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to really say. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to present like this new this new strategy for our you know, front end applications and things like that, but make it in a way that they can understand it. And me and the principal engineer, we were, we were watching videos on like Harvard, you know, edX courses on how to give presentations and they were kind of helpful. But then when we got there, I mean, speaking, I just was like about to have an anxiety attack. It, it went well overall, but if, if I could go back and let's pretend that I was back in this time or that I was a developer preparing to give a presentation what would you have told me to do before flying out to New York and giving this presentation to make sure that it went well and that it was compelling and that I wasn't freaking out? So it, it, you didn't really have time to work more on your presentation in this situation? And I had like a week, a week or two. Yeah, so l let's assume that the presentation is now and... And the content is not something that you can improve or that you already did a great content, but no, it's more emotional. And uh, yeah. yeah, what doesn't work is trying to impress people. If you go there and you're like, okay, I'm going to impress them. I'm going to show them that I'm smart, uh -huh. that uh, I know that, that, that that's going to be extremely hard. Because you, you will fight against uh, something that is, uh, you, you will try to control how you're being perceived. Mm -hmm. And usually this doesn't end very well. So that's something to okay. avoid, especially for engineers, because we, we have the tendency of wearing this smart mask. You know, we, we are, uh, we, we are mm -hmm. smart, so we need to sound smart. We need to show we are smart. But this, this gives a lot of anxiety usually, and it's not what people want. It's not what people expect. When you are listening to someone, if, picture if you're in the audience, what do you want, Brian? Do you want that the speaker show you that it's no. smart? Like, oh, I, 
probably don't, don't care. care. You know, it's like, yeah, look, look how smart <laughs> I am. This is so great. And uh, you're like, okay, okay, good. That's great for you. Great good, <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. But, but what if you, there is a problem that you'd like to get solved and this person talk to you about this problem and show you how to solve it? Would, would you like that. that? Of course. And if this, and if this person isn't smart, would you still like Oh, yeah, it? I wouldn't care. Yeah, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the, that, 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 that's the point. Be People, they like that you speak about their problem and that you can help them. If you can help them, it's amazing. Okay. Your, your, your job isn't to sound smart. Y your job is to find out how you can help. Ah, oh, what type of problem do mm -hmm. they have? I wonder if I, I can maybe ask them, maybe dig a, a little more. Then let's see if I can propose something that would solve their problem. Or maybe propose it, propose something else if I don't know, or if I know someone that could help. Wow! So I the mm -hmm. the um, what I would tell to the Brian seven years ago, I would say, Brian, they don't care that it's you. They don't care if you're smart or not, but they care about their issues. Focus on their issues. Try to find what it is and give them value. Give them something that helps them fix their problems. That would have been amazing advice because it sounds so simple, but that was what I was hung up on. I'm like, how am I going to be perceived? How am I going to be perceived? And I think that degraded part of my message Because I was there to help ultimately. That's what I really want to do. I'm like, here's this cool new strategy. It's going to work. It's going to be great. And I think I got too caught up in that, which I think gave me the nerves, which I was feeling like, how am I being looked at? But you're right. We can't control how we are perceived ultimately. Like, there's nothing we can do about that. But if you're offering a solution that helps people, especially a business, that's all they care about. You can come in there wearing sweats and, uh, you know, I don't know, a hood on your head. Probably. I, I wouldn't do that. But you probably could if you have a really good solution to a problem because people don't necessarily care. Well, what a great way. I like how you do this mental reframing of things. It seems like a lot of what you're you're really good at because you've given me a couple different mental models that I plan on using just from this show that I'm going to use going forward, especially when it comes to like mm -hmm. feeling that anxiety and using that as a cue rather than like a warning sign because sometimes I see it like, Oh, maybe you shouldn't say this. And now I'm going to use it as maybe you, you, should, you should probably say something. Last question for you. How does mastering communication for developers advance their careers, even if they have no desire to become a manager or a leader? Personal life, I would say. If you really, and if you're really sure that you don't want to be a manager or leader, but even, even the, I, I would put a caveat here because how do you know? Yeah, right. Maybe when you develop those skills, you will realize that, wow, there's so much meaning in connecting with others and helping people. There's so much meaning in helping the communication flow smoothly and make the projects better and make sure that we are helping the, our customers the most there we can. You know, there, there's so much meaning into it that you might well start to develop those communication skills and then think, hmm... Actually, being a manager and a leader might be a lot funnier than what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. And I might be able to do such a bigger impact with those skills. But, but let's, let's assume that's not the okay. case. Yeah. Let's assume that even with those skills, I, you I still don't want to do it. Yeah. I, then I, I, I would say, <laughs> I would say the, um, you won't believe the meaning that's behind it when you start to present when you start to organize, to help people, to develop relations, meaningful relationships with, with people, you, you, you realize that all the meaning in life might well be in this. And just for discovering this, you should develop those communication skills because it can, it can enable you to to reach a, a whole new level of satisfaction in life that if, if you would have asked me before when I was mm -hmm. shy, I wouldn't have, I, I didn't know that there were, it was even possible to feel such satisfaction and meaning 
in relations and in communications. And I know when I look back, I realized that I didn't really know what happiness meant in the past. Wow. It, it, it feels like I somehow reached another level of happiness where I, I feel open. You know, wow. the, um, before I felt a mm -hmm. bit closed, but when you feel open and you know you can talk to everyone and you know that it's going to be great, you will have a good time, life has a different color. That's powerful. So tr 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 just for yeah. that, even if you don't use it professionally. You're right. It, it's worth oh, it. Oh, man, that's <laughs> so spot on. Like just... We're humans, right? Like this is just one aspect of what we do. Like your job speaking, of course, is important, but right, as a human, we have that deep desire to be connected, like like we spoke about. Wow. Well, thank thank you so much for sharing your amazing personal story and also for the free session you gave thank to you. me. I can totally vouch for Jeff, by the way. That was an amazing session. And just through this conversation we've had, I feel like I've learned so much. Where can people find you online? I'm going to have your links in the show notes, by the way, but where can people find you? Yeah, I'm posting tips uh, almost every day on LinkedIn, Geoffrey Huck. And may I share a gift with our oh, listeners? Oh, please. Brain? Yeah, for sure. I'm curious. What is it? I also have a, a small guide available on my website. You can get it at geoffreyhuck.com slash podcast. Nice. And it's... A um, small guide that gives you the first steps in the journey to become a, an effective and confident speaker. Oh, man, I'm, I'm adding that to the podcast notes. And I'm going to go download that for sure. I, I need that. I needed that years ago. I'm going to have all these links at the show notes. And hopefully I have you on again. This is a really great conversation. I really appreciate you showing up today. Thank you. It was very fun. Thank, Thank you. you. That'll do it for today's episode of the Develop Yourself podcast. If you're serious about switching careers and becoming a software developer and building complex software and want to work directly with me and my team, go to parsity.io. And if you want more information, feel free to schedule a chat by just clicking the link in the show notes. See you next week.